Hi there. Thanks for joining the Feedback Stronger Masterclass. I'm Donna, and I'd like to introduce you to Jonathan Sweeney and tell you a little bit about his career. Jonathan has a successful career spanning four decades. He's been the CEO and COO of ASX listed organizations. He's an expert at managing stakeholders and providing feedback in complex work environments. And of course, he's one of our ACI partners. As you can see, he's highly qualified in what we've chosen as our first topic of the ECI Masterclass series, Feedback Stronger. I'll hand you over to Jonathan. Good afternoon, everyone. Donna, thank you so much for that introduction. Yeah. Feedback and feeding back stronger. Today, we're going to go through how we can make feedback more effective, how we can make it part of what we do, how we can bring feedback into the ordinary and help people not only participate with less anxiety, but also to offer feedback more readily. In speaking to executives, one issue every single one I've spoken to has mentioned is how hard they find it to give feedback, but also how hard sometimes it is to receive feedback. We'll be touching on both those in this presentation, and hopefully at the end of it, all of us will be better equipped to engage in stronger feedback. This presentation is in three parts. The first part is around the need for both types of feedback and how we can make it easier to get and receive feedback. One of the keys is to take the emotional baggage that comes with feedback away. We'll touch on that. Put people more at ease. Make sure that it's seen as constructive. Make sure we get people's buy-in. Very important. I love this photo. In most people, can I offer you some feedback? Is usually met with either alarm or anxiety or both. That is a key part of the challenge in feedback, is if we trigger a threat response, in other words, we take people by surprise, or they're not expecting it, or they're fearing bad news, they'll move into a fight or flight. And fight or flight is not the state of mind we want people to be in when we're having a conversation about feedback. When you are under fight or flight, you close down. Your primitive brain takes over and you really find it hard to think rationally. That's exactly what we don't want when we're giving feedback. So we need to make sure the environment in which we give feedback doesn't take people by surprise and doesn't trigger that fight or flight response. There are two types of feedback that I'll be talking about today, and both of them are very, very important. One-off feedback, ad hoc feedback, incidental feedback, all mean the same thing. It's the feedback you give someone or you receive, usually when you've done something and someone gives you a quick bit of feedback very contemporaneously with what you've done. But you need to do both types of feedback. Feedback, unfortunately, has got a very short half-life. What do I mean by that? We remember different things from feedback. Some people remember the positive affirmation of what they did right. Others dwell on the negative, and some aren't quite sure what the feedback was about at all. So one way to make sure feedback stays and it continues to help people is it needs to be continuous. It needs to be comprised of both one-off and scheduled feedback. One-off feedback is very, very powerful. It's timely and gives people context. It can be done very quickly after some behavior is noticed and therefore can have instant impact. And also very, very importantly, it allows someone to fine tune very quickly. But perhaps the most important thing about one-off or ad hoc feedback is it creates the groundwork for scheduled feedback. Scheduled feedback, regular feedback, is usually at three, six, or hopefully more regular than 12 monthly. This might be the performance appraisal setting. It might be the schedule catch up to talk about how things are going. This feedback is extraordinarily important as well because it's much more structured. It gives you and the person who's getting the feedback time to prepare. It gives you time to discuss the issues. It also will have a defined period of observation and it allows 
you to set and fine tune goals. You can tie it all together. You can bring in the one-off ad hoc feedback messaging, as well as a more scheduled and structured type of messaging all together in the one forum. Very, very, very powerful. Annual reviews are the most common type of scheduled feedback. There's nothing wrong with annual reviews. In fact, I think they're extraordinarily beneficial. However, they need to be done in the context of an ongoing feedback dialogue. As Mindtools talk about in this quote, you don't want an emotional environment where people are suffering from fear and anxiety because feedback is so important and so key to engaging our people and keeping them on track. Also, receiving feedback helps you fine-tune how you do things and help you perform better. So how do we reduce this feedback shock? How do we take, minimise the anxiety out of and minimise the anxiety in a feedback conversation? It's simple. Just make it a regular occurrence. That's very easy to say, but it's actually not that hard to do. You want to create a feedback-friendly environment. You want feedback to be just part of what we do around here. But you need to make the first move. You expect other people to move down a feedback pathway without you leading and being an example of it, I think you'll be sadly mistaken. So be a role model. Seek feedback, respect it, reflect on it, apply it. Very important, because if you aren't the first mover, if you don't demonstrate the behaviours you expect others to do, in my experience, it's unlikely you'll see much change. By being a role model, you also reduce the shock effect, that triggering of the fear or flight. There's a couple of things when you're modelling it you need to do. Ensure, if you seek feedback, that the giver of that feedback is at ease because they're taking a risk <laughs> at giving you feedback. It mightn't end well for them. So make sure they're at ease. Watch your response. Don't cross your arms. Don't be negative in your body language. Be open. Be curious. Ask for clarification if you're not sure. Rephrase and reframe what you've been told to make sure you have understood it. Another way to encourage feedback is to be very clear and share with others where you see your own areas for improvement are and seek feedback in those areas. This will make it easier for people to speak up. Always thank someone for giving you feedback. They've taken a risk after all. Also acknowledge what you will work on based on their feedback. You've empowered them to give you further feedback. Once you show you value and appreciate receiving feedback, it makes it much easier for others to receive it as it reduces the fear factor because you have modeled the behavior yourself. Listen with intent when someone is giving you feedback. Be curious. Make sure you hold back your response until they've finished making their point. Go-to questions are a great, great way for us to get feedback and make it easier for people to give feedback. A go-to question is an open-ended question. In other words, it cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. Make it clear in the go-to question what you're looking for. Keep it authentic. Make it in your own voice. This is not scripted. This needs to be relaxed. This needs to be casual. Because if you're not relaxed and casual, you can guarantee the person you're seeking feedback from won't be. It needs to be non-threatening. It needs to be conversational. An example of a good go-to question is, what could I have done differently to make your job easier? How many of you have ever asked that question of anyone? What a great question. What a great source of information for you to help you do things better. Another thing to be careful of when you're seeking feedback is the seniority. If you're quite senior in the business, it becomes more and more difficult to get feedback and more and more risky for people to give it to you. So you have to work even harder at modelling the behaviour. 
Robert Kaplan sets it out well here. Who's going to tell you the things you don't want to hear? If you can create an environment where feedback is valued and sought and leads to change, then you will get more and more people participating in the feedback, more and more people giving and responding to receive feedback. As long as they see it has a direct and positive influence on the behavior of the senior leaders and the direction of the company.